Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Martin Del Campo. Uh, this is a repeat opponent. I played him twice recently, and we're getting another King's Indian. We battled it out in this same line recently, so I'm curious if he's found any sort of improvements for black. Guess we'll find out shortly. So far the game is proceeding like our previous game. A6, A4, yep. He's going right down the same road. Um, this was played in a game in uh, the White A tournament recently between, uh, who was it? I think Gunina and Salem were the two players in the White uh B tournament. Tata Steel. And when... Martin Del Campo and I played this line last time. I think he played queen f6. Yeah, like he does here. And I should take... Yeah, pawn takes, and then I'll go knight h3. So I'm trying to stick my knight on f4. And usually they play knight g6 in reply to that plan. And then I go pawn f4. Yeah, so f4, because I don't want him playing f4 himself. And now his minor pieces are restricted somewhat. Yeah, this is going like exactly like our previous game, I think. Uh, do I play bishop f2 or king h1? Can't recall which move is best here. I'll go bishop f2 this time. Now I'll be very curious to see the previous game. So I remember generally what happened, but I don't remember the specific move order. I think something very similar to this happened. Like he doubled on the E file, I want to say. And it looks like he may do the same thing this time. To me, this is, this is a tough position for black. Um, I personally don't really see the appeal of playing such a position for him. But... Um, you know, he might he might have some sort of improvement prepared, so we'll find out. Um, a lot of times I can go king h1, rook g1, and then g3. It's an interesting plan. So if I play bishop h5, he might preserve the option of going b5. Ah, yeah, I, I remember now what was happening in this game. After a5, rook a e8... It's possible that um, after the rooks get traded, my pawn becomes weak on this square. So I'm going to try not to play a5. That just clicked for me right now in talking about this position. Yeah, I don't want to trade that guy. Okay, I'm going to go king h1. And when he doubles up, I'll play rook g1. And I'll see what he does. Yeah, I don't want to play pawn a5 yet. It's not necessary. So I'm going to pester him with the threat of g3. I'm kind of questioning whether I even needed to play rook a1 to carry out this plan, but rook a1 is a useful move on general grounds. So, One thing I do remember, when I was reviewing the game against Martin Del Campo last time, he was actually watching the postmortem. I'm pretty sure because uh, right after I had concluded the video and I was moving the pieces around and stuff, I saw that he had uh, logged out of the board. So I think he stuck around and was watching me like move the pieces around and stuff. <laughs> or maybe he even watched my video. Who knows? Uh, yeah, Mr. Martin Del Campo, you should chime in if you're watching this video right now. <laughs> this is cool, though. It's nice to get into like a theoretical debate in a line, especially a line that you like. And I, I really enjoy playing this line for white. My plan is just play g3, quite simply. And after take, probably take with my rook and double up on the g file and try to go bishop h5. Stuff like that. Okay, I can play bishop h5 now. Can I not? Oh, he's making way for his knight to come to f6. Okay. But then I have knight g5 if he does that. So if bishop h5 and let's say he swaps... On e1, we trade everything. That's got to be good for me, right? Maybe not. Maybe not. 
Hmm. I don't know. I'm just going to do it. It looks good for me. At the very least, it looks very awkward for him. <laughs> if he takes, I might want to take with the, the bishop, actually. And not trade the rooks. I don't know that I really gain much by trading the rooks. Because if we trade off all the rooks and I take with a queen, he can play queen e8 at the end. Although I think I win a pawn in that line if he does that. Hmm. So if rook takes e1, I take with a bishop, he might play bishop d4. There is that. Yeah, I better take with the rook just to be certain. And then take, I'll take with the queen. Pre-move that. Hmm, goes b5. Striking on that wing. Okay, so I can win a pawn if I want. Let's do it. I can take on h4. That's always in the air. Yeah, I might as well. I don't see what else to do. He'll probably play b4. It's going to go knight d1. Yeah, knight d1. Seems fine. I'm making sure my pieces like don't get overloaded. Like, if he takes e1, I can take with the queen, because queen takes d5. He's still tied down to that knight. He has a real tough time just unwinding these minor pieces in general. This is like a constant problem for black in this line. Okay, against that move, I feel like I should just move my bishop back. But he might go queen g7. What about just knight g5? Nah, knight g5 is not so good. Let's do this. Keep pieces on the board. King g7. Let's go knight e3. Maybe I can get my knight into c4. Yeah, bishop d4. So if knight in, he can take on d5. That's annoying. We'll go here now. I want to go knight c4. He may not let me, though. But at any rate, I think it's good to have this pawn protected. I think I can do this now. Well, hmm. There, trade, trade. Okay, let's just do that. Go for something active. Uh, take now. Okay, this is fantastic for me now. Mm hmm. Let's just go here. Uh, knight b6, maybe. Defend that guy. <laughs> I still have a big advantage. He can't move his queen because I take on d4 with check. It's a funny position. He's kind of dominated here. Just got to keep everything defended. Time warning. Uh, let's just take this. Still can't do much. My knight just protects everything. It's kind of cool.
yeah. Okay, well, that's a little bit unclear at the end. I mean, I'm up several pawns, but uh, breaking through might be difficult. I'm kind of tied down. Like if he checks me on a1 and I block with the bishop. Okay, so like I said, this this encounter really mirrored our last one pretty pretty closely. I'll look that game up uh, on video here while we do the postmortem. So I pretty much said a lot of stuff about this line in that previous video, but um, a lot of it revolves around this kingside play. So him playing f5. See, his structure becomes very loosey-goosey after this. He's got two isolated pawns. He has uh, staked out a lot of space over here, and it, it kind of like looks appealing for black. But I don't know, maybe it's just my uh, classical chess instincts here, but I, I really feel like white is for choice in these positions. And it's not really close in my opinion. Um, I mean, I know the computer likes white by a pretty good margin. Take that for what it's worth, but... Yeah, so like if he doesn't play knight g6, I very well might play knight f4 myself and try to gain entry to a great square. And from there, like he'll have to think about my knight jumping into e6 sometimes. So knight g6, and now I play f4 here, here. So last time last time I might have played rook ae1. I'm fairly certain we had this exact position. Last time I might have played rook ae1. And king h1 also makes a lot of sense too. So here, uh, rook fe8, here, rook e7. I'm curious if I chose the right plan here because it seems like I should play down the center, uh, perhaps with the e-file, but this is the most testing plan to prepare g3 in conjunction with bishop h5. So I, I like this position. I think he has a tough time finding something to do. Hmm. Computer gives a small edge to white. Let's just see what it says here. It likes that a5 move. Yeah, okay, so I was alluding to a5, which shuts down the prospect of b5 for a while, but like I remember analyzing that last game, and the problem with Check. this sort of thing, if it happens, if we swap all the rooks, is that, yeah, you can see the computer eval queen d8 at the end, and this pawn is vulnerable. And I pointed this out in the last video. So that's why I was hesitant to advance the pawn to a5, but maybe it's okay just so long as I don't trade the rooks. Here the engine says rook b1, that's kind of a strange move. Only reason I'd go rook b1 is if I could play b4, but given the weakness of my knight on c3, that seems unlikely. Hmm. Well, let's just click forward. So king h1, this happened. I played bishop h5. I wasn't sure which way to recapture here. Took with the rook. But yeah, bishop takes might be better. What didn't I like about bishop takes? I think bishop d4 is what I didn't like. Attacking that guy. Maybe misplacing my pieces a little bit. Because I really want my rook on g1 if I'm going to avoid exchanging it. So I can play g3. And use the file to its full effect. I'm fine with my decision to play rook takes. Computer says this position is level. Says he should take Check. on e1 first, and then, yeah, I have to decide which way to take. I probably would have taken with the queen, to be honest. And now b5. Take, take, bishop takes, b4. This is sort of similar to the game. He goes down a pawn, but he might have compensation. Because otherwise his position is okay. Aside from being down a pawn and having some uh, minor piece congestion, his position is largely okay. I mean, my position is not perfect either. Like, I've got clear pawn weaknesses. Um, I'd like to say my minor pieces are better, but I know they can be somewhat awkward too. Hmm. So in the game, he played b5 straight away, didn't he? I took, he took. Now, the engine suggests I should just abandon um, any idea about trading rooks on the e-file or allowing him to trade and just go after the A-file now. Maybe I can infiltrate to A6 or A7 would be the idea. This E-file is uh, is kind of funny in this line. Like it seems like it should be very coveted by both white and black, but in a lot of these lines, it apparently like doesn't matter very much, especially for white. Like my prospects are not really down the E-file. I'm kind of 
starting to see more and more. Okay. Bishop F2, so I kept this. Yeah, now we're approaching serious time pressure territory. So I still have this advantage, but converting it is different. Okay, so this was a mistake. Knight C4. Played with 35 seconds on my clock after I'm done with that. So he can trade on E8. Check. Yeah, he should insert that trade because I slowed him down on the next move by trading myself. Queen takes E1. Then he can take on B2, grab a pawn. Okay. And if I take with the bishop, bishop B5. Aha. Yeah, attacking this, which is one of the defenders of B2. And I assume if I play B3 that this is not so good for me. Yeah, something like this. Swap these guys, swap this, and he's got a very powerful protected pass pawn. He's still down one pawn, but the pawns that I'm up are not playing at all right now, and his is a very clear player. Computer just thinks he's winning. Interesting. It'd be tough to stop that pawn, yeah. Okay, so it got a little um, a little wild around here. I played inaccurately. But this seems to turn out very well for me. I probably should have just taken on b4 directly. I knew that pawn was hanging. I was just worried about my knight being stabilized. Yeah, now it seems like I should be close to technically winning because his issue here is he can't activate his queen without losing that d-pawn just straight away. So long as I keep my wits about me and everything defended, he should just be pretty much losing here. Yeah, here I should play knight f2. That's that's a good point by the computer. I shouldn't allow him to take me on uh, h3. That just makes things harder. Yeah, now he had hardly any time at all. All right, very interesting. Um, before I get rid of this game, let's let's actually... I'm going to search my games with him. Okay, so I think I think this was our previous game. Maybe I'll just examine this. Okay, that fits nicely in the window. So this is the game that we played prior. Was it all the same? I think there were a couple move order nuances. Ah, we reached this exact same position. So in that game, I went bishop h5 right away. Interesting. And in this one, I played uh, king h1. I think I played king h1. Let me check. Where was it? Yep, king h1. Okay. Yeah, so we were having a little theoretical debate. And this one went bishop h5. And I did play the a5 move, yep. And that's that's where I was um, drawing that idea from about his potential for counterplay. Because he could have taken on e1 and then played queen d8. And I know the engine, when I reviewed this game last time, was saying that he was okay here. Was saying that uh, black was fine, or he had counterplay. I think it was giving dead equality, actually. Yeah. Just curious which move the computer actually likes in this position. So I played king h1 in that other game. I think it's a healthy advantage. Bishop h5. Also about the same, maybe a little less. Hard to tell how accurate this is, because I think this still might be a position that the computer doesn't completely understand yet. Again, it's giving that a5 move, but... Okay. All right, well, the ball's in your court, Mr. Martin Del Campo, if you're watching my videos and analysis. <laughs> Let's play this line again. This was fun. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll be back with one more video today. Bye.